Okay, hey, well, welcome back. And so today I figured we would uh, look more into the um, supply chain or shipping issues that have been going on here in the U.S., uh, mainly because, you know, the, those winter holidays are coming up. A lot of people are buying gifts and stuff for um, for those different events and seeing family and all that. So, uh, yeah, I figured we would read a little bit about it, see uh, kind of what we can find, and perhaps um, see if we can maybe get some answers as to what's going on and if there's any sort of... Um, I guess, thoughts of what will happen. So uh, two quick articles here uh, queued up here. Um, starting out here from CNBC, it says supply chain uh, disruptions will take quite a long time to resolve, says shipping firm CEO. So a few key points here, uh, bottlenecks in global supply chains will take, quote, quite a long time to resolve and cause consumer prices to rise, said Tim Huxley, who's the uh, CEO of the Hong Kong-based Mandarin Shipping. Now, this is the shipping industry is building more container fleet, uh, but most of that new capacity won't be ready until 2023 uh, at the earliest. So, okay, so a couple years off, about two years or so, okay. Uh, more investments in infrastructure like ports, roads, and bridges are needed, but that too could take years to materialize. Yeah, of course, obviously the stuff that they have to like um, expand ports, build new roads and bridges and stuff that does take, um, can take quite a bit of time depending uh, on, the, on the scope of the project, but Let's see what we got here. So disruptions in global supply chains, which have led to a shortage of some goods, will take quite a long time to resolve and push consumer prices even higher. Well, that's not good, obviously. Don't really don't want to see that. Uh, global trade bounced back shortly after a slump caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, but that has contributed to problems ranging from a shortage of shipping containers and warehouse capacity to congestion at ports and a lack of truck drivers to move goods. So yeah, so to more of it too, I think, is that it's the whole system, right? Because if you have, you know, basically during the, the pandemic, we had a lot of industries and a lot of companies that were either uh, at a much reduced capacity or shut down completely. So there wasn't wasn't as much stuff moving and just not as many people, um, like truck drivers and stuff, available to move all these goods. So this is going to take quite a long time to sort out. Tim Huxley, chief executive of Hong Kong-based Mandarin Shipping. Uh, and each sector that is involved in this particular combination of black swan events has really got to try and address its particular issues. Right. So I guess what he's saying here is each industry is going to have to figure out what to do, right? Because if you say like shipping, right, say shipping is, is taken care of, right? They have new, more containers, all that stuff, whatever. Shipping takes care of it, but then they get to the port and there's not enough folks working there or there's not enough truck drivers to move all this stuff out. Like you may have all your ducks in a row, but then when it comes to like things down the line, um, you know, might be slowdowns uh, there as well. Uh, for one, the shipping industry is building more container fleet, he said. However, most of that new capacity won't be ready until 22 or 2023 uh, at the earliest. Until then, a shortage of ships persists. Okay. Uh, in addition, more investments in infrastructure like ports, roads, bridges are needed, but that too could take years. All of these issues are here to stay for quite a while to come. So I'm afraid that this is actually going to end up translating into higher costs for consumers down the line and indeed shortages of some goods. Yeah, unfortunately, that's probably what's going to happen because if you if you have these downline uh, shipping issues or transportation issues, that's just going to make everything a lot scarcer and a lot harder to get. Uh, bottlenecks in global supply chains have threatened the supply of a whole range of goods, including food and beverages, consumer electronics, and Christmas decorations. That's interesting uh, that they single out Christmas decorations, but I guess because it's that time of the year, so uh, people are thinking about that more so than normal. Uh, such constraints have contributed to higher inflation. Some economists have warned that inflation could stay higher for longer than expected. Yeah, I have heard that there, there are some of the reports have said that like the inflation that we're experiencing now, at least here in the U.S., um, could definitely get to be, uh, could be a little bit higher uh, and stick around for a lot longer as things sort of even out, uh, as it takes time for that stuff to even out. Uh, the International Monetary Fund said last month that it largely concurred with assessments that current prices increase will eventually ease, but noted there was high uncertainty around those forecasts. Yeah, I could see because you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, due to inflation, inflationary, inflationary risks uh, in developed nations, including the US and the UK. The fund said central banks could prepare to tighten policy in case inflation gets out of control or should prepare. Yeah, definitely. I think that you're going to want, um, it's a good recommendation. You're, you're, you're hopefully different financial institutions and banks and stuff will um, see this stuff coming and actually like start making changes now um, to sort of prepare for that 
uh, in the future. Because again, we don't know, like what they're saying is it could be quite a while. There's not going to be new capacity in some of these places till 2023. Yeah, so uh, we'll see. But so let's see. Uh, this article is from Business Insider a few days later, only uh, about three days later after the other one. Uh, so let's see what the president himself has had to say about this stuff. And this article tell, said, said Biden said that he hasn't seen any White House reporters explain the supply chain very well. This will be interesting. So it's uh, from the photo of President Joe Biden calls on reporters for questions as he speaks about the bipartisan infrastructure bill in the Senate dining room of the White House on November 6th. This was a little while ago, a couple weeks ago. Uh, some brief overview points here. President Joe Biden Saturday, so that's a few days earlier, uh, discussed supply chain issues after a White House speech. Biden told the reporters assembled that they haven't explained the supply chain, quote, very well. The effects of the COVID-19 pandemic have, uh, pardon me, fueled congestion uh, at U.S. shipyards causing major delays. So what did he say? So President Joe Biden on Saturday spoke enthusiastically about the U.S. House of Representatives passing the $1.2 trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill whoops, uh, that we infuse billions into repairing the nation's crumbling highways, roads, and bridges. Oh, that's good because so this is actually something we remember from, from the other article they were saying that a better infrastructure with these highways and uh, bridges and stuff is something that's needed to sort of ease the, um, the supply chain issues. So hopefully um, that is kind of what this is going to help alleviate. Let's see. However, during the question and answer session with reporters after his speech, the president took part in a remarkable exchange where he discussed supply chain shortages, an issue that has increasingly become a political liability for his administration. True, because a lot of people, unfortunately, because Biden is the president, people are a lot um, are kind of like blaming the administration and all that kind of stuff on him. So I guess, yeah, it makes sense that he would want to address it. The disruptions in the nation's supply chain arose largely as the COVID-19 pandemic ravaged the economy, which resulted in empty shelves across the country as Americans sought to purchase as many core essentials as possible without the normal restocking that would usually accompany such shortages. True, a lot of times I remember in the beginning uh, when sort of the pandemic was first getting underway, people were sort of flocking to grocery stores, stocking up on non-perishables and all that because people were very uncertain. They didn't know uh, what was going to be, how the future was going to be and what was going to be either scarce or not available depending on on closure closures and all that kind of stuff so definitely and i don't think that mentality has left a lot of people i think people are still in that mentality of i gotta go buy things i gotta go make sure i have enough of everything because i don't know and of course then because shelves are empty now it causes people to panic and so on and so forth so uh, but hopefully that mentality kind of shifts a little bit as things become more and more available as insiders Grace K reported last month, continued virus mitigation measures have prevented a return of the supply chain to levels that existed before March 2020. And until that happens, the now infamous backlogs of American ports will continue to be a major issue. Uh, the world economy is out of sync because parts of it were forced to go offline when the pandemic started, and getting all of the industry players back in line at the same time is near impossible. Uh, this former U.S. trade negotiator, Harry uh, Boardman, Broadman, told Insider Magazine. So by, uh, Biden, while going off script with members of the press, said that the Americans want to know why the cost of agricultural products are higher than they, when they shop at the grocery stores. And that's kind of true, right? I mean, people are not necessarily concerned about why there's shipping problems or why there's these issues. Really, they're just concerned with like, hey, I got to eat and why are these prices getting higher and higher? And I don't really see any reason for them to, right? Other than these sort of like nebulous um, supply chain issues that I think people think about because they, they do read about them, but I don't think people actually understand like the, the impact that they're having on, um, on these different industries. So uh, the president presented a hypothetical situation of eating at a restaurant and asking patrons at an adjacent table to explain the supply chain situation. How do they explain the supply chain to us? Do they understand what we're talking about? They're smart people. Why is everything backed up? Well, it's backed up because the people who supply the material uh, that end up on our kitchen table have closed those plants because they had COVID. It's a complicated world that people are facing, he said. You can understand why people are upset whether you have a PhD or you're working in a restaurant. It's confusing. People are understandably worried. Yeah, I think that all is, that tracks, man. That, that all makes sense to me. Uh, Biden then directed his supply chain comments uh, to the White House reporters that cover his administration each day. He said, by the way, you all write for a living. I haven't seen any of you explain the supply chain very well which elicited laughs. Sure, I, I guess it would. I think it, that's understandable, right? Obviously, I mean, we, we when you think, think about it, right, and you, you decide like, hey, well, what is the supply chain issue? Like, if you think about it to yourself, you have to say like, okay, 
do I understand why there's shortages? Like, I know there are shortages. I know there's issues in the ports and stuff, but do I actually understand what's going on? Why is there that? Can I explain it to myself? And I think a lot of times that, yeah, we, we read the media, we read the news and all these articles and stuff, but they really don't break it down to explain exactly like why these things are happening. Uh, to which Biden continued on and said, no, I'm not being critical. I'm being deadly earnest, he replied. This is a confusing time. Yeah, true. Uh, U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said earlier this week that the country would have to further tackle the coronavirus pandemic in order for supply chain issues to subside. Uh, look, there are so many things that are still happening in our economy, distortions, disruptions, things in our supply chain that are affecting prices that are clearly a direct consequence of the pandemic, he told Fox News Sunday, uh, he host, uh, Fox News host Chris Wallace, which is why the best thing we can do for our economy in the short term and to deal with these transitory issues is to put the pandemic behind us. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Got to get people vaccinated. Um, you know, there's the new treatments. I did another video on um, the antiviral pills that are coming out. So there's, there's definitely things we're moving towards um, sort of finishing things up, kind of trying to move past this. But that's it. Pretty short article. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I have. There, this sort of the idea behind these shortages and stuff like that. It's not so much that it's that there's less stuff or there's not, you know, or it's not getting there. It's just sort of this all encompassing combination as, as they were saying, like, you know, if you have plants and stuff, places that were closed or shut down, well, they're not producing goods. So therefore there's less stuff that they're sending out. Uh, if you have less people working, say driving, let's say driving the trucks around or whatever, then you can't, um, and then, then you just can't send out as much stuff. Or if you have issues with shipping and all that kind of stuff. So all these things compounded do, you know, and then uh, as to us, as the end user, as the consumer, we look at it and say, hey, I'm going to the grocery store. I'm trying to find something and it's not there or it's way more expensive than it was just a few months ago. So hopefully, though, with the pandemic getting better, at least uh, as time goes on, more and people get vaccinated, there's better treatments available, all that kind of stuff. Things will hopefully get back to normal or at least the production end of it and the and the shipping end will get back to normal. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll be it. But I guess the best advice you probably have here is if you're ordering something for those winter holidays, order it sooner rather than later uh, so that you can ensure it arrives on time, especially if you're getting something like they were saying, electronics and stuff like that, that are going to be um, a little more scarce. But anyway, with that, that is all I have for you today. So hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, and anyway, let me know um, your thoughts down below in the comments, as always. See you all next time.